Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Springdale, Arkansas, the home of the Springdale Harbor Wildcats. Yes, last week, the Cyclones defeated the original Springdale Ball Club, the original Springdale Bulldogs. And this, of course, is the uh, new expansion high school in the Springdale area, Springdale Harbor High School, and what a year they have had. They are entering tonight's round two of the state football playoffs with a 9-1 and one record. They, of course, have had a bye this past week, so they've had two weeks to get ready for tonight's game while the Cyclones have clawed their way to round two of the state playoffs and they are ready for football here in Northwest Arkansas tonight. Demarius Neal, Avery and Collins, and of course is Andrew Tryon and Bradford Webb, the four co-captains for Russellville this evening. Trey Tyler is one of the co-captains for Springdale. And the other is number 82, Josh McKinney. The playoffs are a wonderful time of the year. The only bad part is somebody, their season will end tonight. That's the, what happens when you get into the playoff situation. But uh, both these teams have had an outstanding year. That's why they're in the second round of the playoffs. And let's see exactly what the uh, officials will indicate. Springdale won the toss and decided to uh, defer to the second half. Russellville will receive to begin the first half. So that sets things up. Springdale Harbor with, of course, as we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, a few things, of course, uh, helping them on their side. That's they're playing at home. And they've had two weeks to prepare for tonight's game because of having a bye in the first round of the state 7A playoffs. Russellville has had to play every week and claw their way to the playoffs, but what a year they have had. The Russellville Crimson Cyclones and big victory last week over the Springdale Bulldogs. And we're happy to be with them for another week of the football playoffs as a kind of the uh, cream of the crop, the icing on the cake, as it were, for this 2009 football season. The banner is ready for the Cyclones to run through, and we are just moments away from football action this evening. As you can see, the cheerleaders are wrapped up a bunch. It is a cold, cold night in northwest Arkansas. And the uh, conditions here at Springdale, probably not the most ideal. It rained all the way up until just a few moments ago. As here come the Cyclones on to the field here at Harbor. The Cyclones of head coach Jeff Holt have had a great year. And, you know, as I think back, so many young men that we did not even know about have really made a name for themselves on this football team. A lot of youngsters that we did know about from a year ago had another great year this year. But, boy, you can just go up and down the Cyclone lineup of new stars that were born this year and have had a great year in the red and white for the Russell Crimson Cyclones. They are dressed in their white road uniforms tonight with red trim and red numerals. And of course, we'll be wearing the uh, black helmets this evening. So the teams come to the sideline to get ready And here we have a great group of uh, youngsters who have made their way with a travel band that made their way up here to Springdale and for the playoffs this evening. 
So there'll be a lot of support for the Cyclones, even though they're in enemy territory here at Harbor High School. Before we get started, want to remind you that we will be showing the great people who are the sponsors and who have been the sponsors all year long of these telecasts in the lower left-hand side of your screen. Hope you'll have a chance to note those and maybe after tonight's game, sometime over the weekend or early next week, you'll have an opportunity to stop by their place of business or maybe uh, call their place of business and tell them how much you appreciate them supporting and sponsoring the Cyclones. The kick coming to Andrew Tryon at the four-yard line. Up the near sideline. Got some running room. Into the open field. He could go all the way. What a way to start this one. Andrew Tryon, 96 yards for the touchdown. Let's look at it again. He put that foot back on the four. Got a great block there and another one there. Then weaves his way up the sideline. Two Harbor defenders missed him. Makes a little cutback here. Stiff arms a defender right there. And Andrew, one of those guys that we didn't know a year ago. Again, with some fireworks for the Cyclones. And Russellville finds themselves on top after only 13 seconds of play in the ball game, leading 6 to nothing. And now it'll be Zach Hocker who will attempt the extra point kick. Zach Hocker, what a year he's had. The most outstanding football kicker in the state of Arkansas. Low snap, the kick is up and the kick, it is good. Russell's on the board, great way to start. Russellville seven, Springdale Harbor zero. You're watching Cyclone Football. Well, Zach Cocker just barely has gotten his uniform on. We have played 13 seconds, and the Cyclones lead 7 to nothing on a 96-yard touchdown run on a kickoff return by Andrew Tryon. Andrew is one of those that you just have a good feeling is going to play college football next year. Already interest from Arkansas State. And here is Hawker with a long kickoff through the end zone, and it will be Harbor football on the 20-yard line, first down and 10. Russell leading 7 to nothing, And that's got to really fuel the Cyclones against this very good Springdale Harbor ball club. So Harbor with their first touch of the football and already trailing seven to nothing. Handoff around the right side. Sean Sayerin. He's a 5'6", 132 pound junior, wears number one. as the Harbor quarterback barks signals from the shotgun. Throws out, it's complete. And a big gain out to about the 40 yard line and the catch by Josh McKinney, one of the co-captains from tonight's tip off and uh, coin toss. Out to the uh, 40 yard line, it's a first down for Harbor. Ryan Luther is the quarterback. He's in the shotgun. Spread formation. Send a man in motion left to right. Luther rolls right and throws. It's complete. 50, 45, and a bound to about the 41-yard line. Wide open was Caleb Vaughn, number eight. It's another first down. They'll mark him almost to the 40-yard line of Russellville. But there's a flag on the play. Let's 
Watch what the officials have to say. There's the yellow hanky on the turf. And usually where the flag is thrown like that, it's usually a holding penalty. So it moves the football back. 11-14 to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 Cyclones following the penalty. Luther wants to roll right. Does. And throws. Complete. Knocked out of bounds immediately. Caleb Vaughn pushed out by John Olson, number three. So the gain out to the 30, almost the 35-yard line. Wide receivers, both left and right. The near side is the wide side of the field. Bring a man in motion. It's a screen pass back to the weak side. And a nice pick up there as carrying the football was Jeremy Vongbone. The fullback is a 5'785 pounder and a junior. So the game was out to the 42 yard line. And right back without a huddle, the Harbor Wildcats bring a man in motion to the near side. Wanting to throw, now scrambling. Luther, big run, 40, 30, 20, and knocked out of bounds about the 13 or 14 yard line. On the quarterback scramble, Ryan Luther. All of his receivers were covered, and he just made the most of it. He just tucked it under, and let's see where the officials will place the football down at. We'll be at the nine-yard line. It'll be first and goal. We haven't played very long, and there have been a lot of fireworks. First man through. That's a short pickup. Let's look at it again on instant replay. Hand off to the tailback. And boom, stopped by Blake Robinson. Hitting him low. That was Gordon Welch, number 28, the ball carrier. 6'1", 167 pounder. Not much on the gain there. Luther. And he hands off once again and nothing doing. As the Cyclone defense, let's look at it again on instant replay. Good penetration. And a host of white jerseys over there to stop once again. Gordon Welch. One of those in on the play was Brad Barnes, number 36. So two downs. Harbor has run. And they have picked up one yard. It's a third down and goal. And Springdale wants to talk it over. We'll take a break. Be right back. You see on the clock, nine minutes and ten seconds. Left to go in the first period, and Russell will lead 7-0 over Harbor. Thanks to a 96-yard kickoff return to begin the ball game by Andrew Tryon. Well, here's Springdale now faced with a third down and goal from the eight. Cyclone defense has stopped the run two straight down. Here's Luther. Keeping it down the right side and knocked out of bounds about the four yard line. Over there was Aaron McConnell. Luther trying to run the same play that he ran all the way to the nine yard line. Let's look at it again. Luther fakes to the halfback, keeps it on the outside. But Russell smelled this one out pretty good and gets Luther out at the five, maybe the four yard line. So here's a field goal attempt on fourth down. The kick is up and the kick it is good. 
It's a 27-yard field goal, and our score, Russell continues to lead 7-3 over Harper. We'll be right back. Well, that was really a moral victory for the Cyclone defense as Springdale Harper had first and goal at the nine-yard line and couldn't punch it in, had to settle for a 27-yard field goal. Here's a short pooch kick, and it is taken by Blake Robinson at the 37-yard line on the fair catch. Just a one-step and boot from Harbor, and the Cyclones get good field position. It's at their own 37-yard line. First down and 10. It's probably a good idea for Harbor not to kick long. The opening kickoff, they kicked deep to Andrew Tryon, and he took it 96 yards for the score, so they decided to kick it short. Trips left. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Firing it. It's complete. That's uh, Demarius Neal, and... Picks up maybe a yard or two. Stop was made by Hunter Kissinger. The Rover, 6'2", 192-pound junior. Two-yard pickup, second down and eight with eight minutes and 42 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Both teams have already scored. Second round of the state, 7A playoffs. Merritt Hughes. Throws, and it's complete to Collins. Tough catch there. A man was on him, but he still made the play. Let's look at it again from ground level. Hughes sees him breaking, and he gets there. The stop was made by Russ Reinerson, number 24. The gain is out almost to the 47-yard line. For the Cyclones. And we have Reeves in the ball game. And he's going to try the sneak to get the uh, first down. Lane Reeves, the young sophomore quarterback. And we'll take a break right here. Cyclones up to the line of scrimmage. Lane Reeves still in the ball game at quarterback. He's going to keep it himself on the... Plows his way out to the 50. And uh, that should be enough yardage. Lane Reeves in there for those short yardage situations. Right at the 50-yard line. Barrett Hughes back into the ball game at quarterback. Has Jacob Sparks in the backfield with him. Back. Screen pass out of the backfield, and that goes to Jacob Sparks. He wanted to turn it upfield. He didn't quite get there. Was knocked out by Jacob Berndick. Two-yard pickup with 7.22 left to go here in the first quarter. 7-3 Cyclones. Send Cole Smith to the far side of the field. Twin receivers to the narrow side, which is the near side, the bottom of your screen. Hughes. Going to go downtown. Has the man. It's a little underthrown and incomplete. Was intended for Cole Smith. Drew double coverage down there. But the ball was hung up just a little bit. Otherwise, that might have been a score. Houston Pruitt, number five, was there to jump up and knock it away. Third down and eight. Football at the 48-yard line of Harbor. Russellville leads 7-3, first quarter. Second round of the 7A state playoffs.
Barrett Hughes from the shotgun. Wants to throw, fires underneath, and got his man, Demarius Neal. Nice little crossing pattern. Making the stop was Russ Reinerson. Looking at it again. Boy, it's pinpoint accuracy. They had a defender all over. Demarius Neal, and he still got it complete. Inside of the 36, about the 36 or 37-yard line. Hughes gives it off. Sweeping the right side, Andrew Tryon. Bumped out of bounds. As he got it to about the 35-yard line. Cody Davis, number 10. As they tried to wall off the uh, Harvard defenders. Second down and eight for the Cyclones trying to add to their current four-point lead of seven to three. Hughes looks to the sideline. And it looks like Coach Holt wants to call a timeout. Let's have that and come right back. Well, following the timeout, Cyclones rehuddle and got exactly what head coach Jeff Holt wanted to run. Offset eye in the backfield. Back, Hughes throws out of the backfield and not much there. Demarius Neal was the receiver. He got it. But he was upended by Preston Cash, number 26. So the football at the 35-yard line. Not much of a gain there. Matter of fact, no gain. Even though it was a completed pass. First quarter clock moving quickly. Hughes fires incomplete. Led his intended receiver... Collins by just a little bit. Football still remains at the 35-yard line. And looks like we're going to have a, a field goal attempt. It'll be 52 yards for Zach Hocker. Now he is Kicked some long ones before, so this is not an impossibility. Blake Robinson will hold. Down, the kick is up. And, oh, it just was a little short. So the score remains. Russellville 7, Springdale Harbor 3. I think Zach found himself kicking into a little bit of a wind. And the ball came up just a little short on that 52-yard attempt. Passing complete. Springdale's first down and finally bumped out of bounds. That was Caleb Vaughn, number eight. You can see over there was Addison Walker and Aaron McConnell. So it's second down and three. The football out at the 27-yard line. Luther going to keep it himself. Got plenty enough for the first down. Got to the 37-yard line for Blake Robinson. Along with Jackson Jacobs make the stop. And Springdale right up to the line of scrimmage. Luther changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Throws out in the flat. It's complete to McKinney. McKinney did a fine job of uh, sidestepping a couple of Russellville defenders. Finally, Aaron McConnell brought him down, number 47. There's a flag on the play. 
You can see it right there. And it's going to be against Tarver. So mark that one back. Harbor just starts to get rolling and they get penalized and that's one of those drive breakers. 531 left to go in the opening period with the Cyclones leading 7 to 3, second round of the state 7A playoffs. Moved it back to the 31 yard line. 17 yards to go for a first down. Luther back. And fires, ooh, almost intercepted. Back there, dropped off from his linebacking position, Brad Barnes almost came up with that one. The intended receiver was Caleb Vaughn, number eight. That would have been a big turnover deep in Harbor territory. Ryan Luther again from the shotgun. Quick pitch right. And Aaron McConnell over there to drop Gordon Welch. Gain on the football is out to the 37 yard line. Clock moving with 4.53 left to go in the opening period. Wide receiver to the near side. That's the wide side of the field. Luther, screen pass back to the near side. One missed tackle there and finally out of bounds. The uh, receiver was the fullback, Jeremy Vong Vaughn. Back to the weak side as the shift, the flow was to the left and the throw back to the right. The gain was to the 44 yard line. Quarterback, Ryan Luther, marks the signals. Brings a man in motion. Going to keep it himself. And whoa, there's a big hog tie. Bulldogging down. That had to be Rue Massey. Yep, it was. I think uh, Rue has a great future in the rodeo business. So it's out to the 48-yard line. Officials are looking it over. They're going to bring the chains in from the near sideline. See whether Harbor got enough for a first down. Oh, just by the nose of the football. So Harbor keeps the drive alive, trailing to the Cyclones by a score of 7-3 to three here late in the first quarter. Ryan Luther. New set of four downs to work with. Still barking signals. Ah, he's going to take it himself. Missed one tackle there. But he couldn't get away from the second. Over there was Logan Pruitt. Grabbed that ankle and held on for dear life. This was a run all the way. Missed there by Rue Massey. And finally, right there, Logan Pruitt held on to the ankle for all it was worth and not much of any gain at all. Only about a half yard. Give it off. That's Welch and Welch. Nice bit of running across the right side. Picked up about six or seven. Bradford Webb was over there, along with uh, John Anderson. Three twenty-three left to go in the first period. Seven-three. Cyclones lead the Springdale Harbor Wildcats. Handed it off. That's Welch, and Welch runs hard. 
down to the 40-yard line of the Cyclones. And that's enough for a first down for Harbor. On a roll now. Cyclones continue to lead, but Springdale Harbor now threatening. Sawyer Grace just checked into the lineup, number 56 for the Cyclones. Fake the quick pitch going downtown. He has a man wide open. Oh, but knocked away at the last second. Well, I mean to tell you, that pass was intended but for Jordan Nicholson. Let's look at it again. Bounces off, though, the helmet of number 17, Jackson Jacobs. There's a flag on the play, but they call pass interference against the Cyclones. And as you saw on the replay, Jackson Jacobs never touched him. The ball bounced off of his helmet as he was defending on the play. And this one hurts because that was a nice, actually turned out to be a great defensive play. So that's 15 yards down to the 25-yard line and a first down. But boy, the replay shows you quite clearly that Jackson Jacobs never touched the intended receiver, Jordan Nicholson. Ball carry around the left side and, ooh, knocked out of bounds hard by Andrew Tryon in a few words. Said there, that was Caleb Vaughn carrying the football. And let me tell you, folks, there is a lot on the line in this football game tonight, so... Players' tempers are right on the edge tonight. Hand it off to Welch. Welch, nice move to the outside, to the five, and finally bumped down at the five. Addison Walker there. Also, Jackson Jacobs, 17, make the stop. But a nice run by Welch. Football placed at the six-yard line. That's Welch again. Same play he just ran. And down to the one-yard line. Bradford Webb had to make the play. And Welch has become a workhorse on this drive. Welch, not that big. 6'1", 167 pounds. But he's had some good moves. Give it off to Welch, and this time he's in for the score. Went in almost untouched from a yard out. And Harbor is taking the lead. Let's look at it again. Just a straight handoff, and Welch, you can see, no white jerseys there to stop Mr. Welch. And Harbor has taken the lead by a score of 9-7. to seven. Have the extra point kick coming up. Snap down the kick up, and the kick is good. And a new score. Springdale Harbor leading the Cyclones now by a score of 10 to 7. Just a little under two minutes to go here in the first quarter, and we've had a lot of fireworks already, including a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Andrew Tryon. And again, they're going to short kick because of that. And it's caught by, it looks like, Blake Robinson on the short sky kick. He uh, signaled for a fair catch, and Russell will have great field position. Either the 41 or the 42-yard line. But now the Cyclones find themselves on the short end of the score. Two Harbor, 10 to seven. 
So this Cyclone offense has got to get cranked up and take momentum back from Harbor right here. Three wide receivers are split left. Hughes can't throw there. Finally threw it to the sideline, really. He was trying to throw to one of his backs for a bubble screen out there, and Harbor had a good job of infiltrating all three of the expected receivers, and Barrett Hughes, all he could do was throw it away. So indeed, Harbor has looked at film, a lot of film, of Russellville. The Cyclones, again, have three wide receivers left. Hughes looking to throw. Going downtown. Has a man out there. A little short. Was thrown a little bit short intended for Jacob Sparks. Good defense turned in there by Houston Pruitt, number five. As the ball was thrown a little short. Sparks had to wait on it. And that gave Springdale time to recover defensively. 10 to 7. Russell Cyclone football on IMC Studios Sports Watch. Football still at the 42 yard line. Hughes looking down the middle. It's complete. Boy, what? Ooh, he was searched big time by when he got it. Matt Lutz, the intended receiver, and the was the receiver. But look here, he gets hit pretty hard. Wham! Right there. The defender was Drew Lawson. The free safety, 5'8", 162-pounder. Cyclones at the 40-yard line of Harbor. Offset eye, Lutz now goes in motion left, resets. And we have a timeout on the field. We'll be right back. One twenty-one left to go in the first period. This last couple of minutes of the first quarter is gone very slowly after the first part went lightning fast. Barrett Hughes, are there at Lane Reeves now in the ball game. Gives it off. Hughes sparks to the 40-yard line. Just a short pickup. Looked like uh, number 61, Eric Pierce, the nose guard, made the play. He's no small guy, 6'1", 268 pounds. He hasn't missed too many meals. Football at the 40-yard line. Cyclones with twin receivers left. Bring uh, Cole Smith in motion. Roll away, look out, pass complete. Well, Lutz had to reach for it, and that cost him his footing. Lutz makes the, cha the catch. Barrett Hughes was under pressure. Got it to Lutz, but when he had to turn and reach for it, he lost his footing. Although there were two defenders there for Harbor, the gain is only a yard to the 39. And time running out here in the first quarter. Ten seconds and less. 10 to 7, Harbor in the lead over our Russell Crimson Cyclones from Springdale, Arkansas. And that'll be the end of the first quarter of play. And that's the score. Harbor with a 10 7 lead over the Cyclones. We'll be back with the exciting second quarter after you see these messages. We're back, Springdale, Arkansas, Harbor High School, where the Cyclones trail Harbor by a score of 10 to 7. 
Although the Cyclone fans were given a big throw to open the ball game. With a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Andrew Tryon. Football at the 39-yard line of Springdale. Barrett Hughes back to throw. Looking. Not much place to go. Now he throws and really threw it out of bounds. Nearest uh, intended receiver, Cole Smith, but Barrett Hughes just got rid of it. We tell you, good coverage out there by the Harbor defensive backs. And this is a good-sized Springdale ball club. In the trenches, here's Zach Hocker coming in. And let's see what the Cyclones are going to do here. Well, they're going to place it down at the 46-yard line. That's a 56-yard field goal try. Wow. Well, Zach has the leg. Down. The kick is up. And the kick is no good. And Zach is not a happy man. Well, 56 yards, a long field goal. I don't care if you're in the pros. That's a long, that's a long kick. Oop, pass thrown incomplete. Tended for Caleb Vaughn. Let's look at it again. Out there and almost, you can see right there, almost a hand got on it from Logan Pruitt, number 35. But incomplete, second down and 10. Give it off. That's Welch, and Welch has had some good runs here in the first half. Again, uh, Gordon Welch, just a junior and 167 pounder, number 28. But of course, uh, runs like that start in the trenches up front. And that's exactly what Harbor has been able to do. And not many people have been able to do that against the Cyclones this year. But they're having a little bit of success right now. Luther hands it off, and this one is stacked up for no gain. Again, Gordon Welch was the ball carrier. Hand off right straight ahead, and it's just clogged up. Cyclones do a good job of stopping the run right there. No gain on that play. 10-7, Springdale Harbor leads the Russville Cyclones on a cold, cold night in Springdale, Arkansas. Second round of the Class 7A playoffs. Luther gives it off, and that's Welch, and he just bangs his way out to about the 44-yard line. Stop was made by Ricky Collins. Look at it again on instant replay, and Collins gave him a pretty good shot. Ten minutes and 18 seconds left in the first half. Springdale leading seven, ten to seven. Here's Luther, wants to throw the football, going downtown. Has a man out there, and what a catch. He had to really stretch out for it, that's McKinney. But he hauled it in right at the 21-yard line. Beautiful catch, beautiful throw, because it almost led him too far. But McKinney laid out for it and hauled it in. He couldn't score with it after he made the catch, but boy, that was a tremendous throw and catch to McKinney. From quarterback Ryan Luther. Hand it off. That's Welch. Sweeps the right side and picks up about three yards. Bradford Webb in on the uh, tackle. I think you can see by what we have seen so far, this is a big physical Harbor ball club. Have some talented, skilled people also. And uh, so there's not much surprise why they're 9-1.
We have an equipment timeout. A lot of you probably can see Big Bray Cook there, the offensive tackle. He is 6'6", 284 pounds. He is a big young man. Rolling right. Quick pass is complete. And that is down inside the 10-yard line. Almost fumbled. The pass was complete to Jeremy Vongvon. And that'll make it first and goal inside the nine-yard line. Harbor already leading 10 to 7. They've uh, done a good job of mixing up the plays between runs and passes and long passes and short passes. Give it off. And the dive down to about the three-yard line for Caleb Vaughn, who took the handoff after coming in motion. Going to place it down at the four-yard line. And the Cyclone defense needs to come up with a big play. They did a little earlier, forcing a field goal after it was first down and goal at the nine. Hand it off. There's Welch in for the score. Let's make that, uh, I, I believe, actually, that was Caleb Vaughn. And he just dives into the end zone. Well, let's change that again. That is Trey Tyler we haven't seen much of. Number two, 5'775 pound senior. So he comes in to spell Gordon Welch and scores from the four-yard line. And it is suddenly 16-7. to seven. The kick attempt down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Your new score, Springdale Harbor 17 and Russellville 7. We'll be right back. Well, the Cyclones, who at one time in this football game led 7 to nothing and 7 to 3, they fall behind 10 to 7, now find themselves 10 points down. But this is a good Springdale Harbor ball club. There's no two ways about it. Like we said, there's a reason they are 9 and 1 in the 7A West. And why they were given a bye in the first round of the playoffs to play Russellville here on the second week. Oscar Escobar is the kicker. He will be kicking off. Let's, let's see if they uh, short sky kick it again. Oh, this is uh, almost an onside kick. Bounds all the way down and it goes out of bounds about the 10 yard line. Tryon thought about picking it up but it went out of bounds and there's the flag you see over there. So let's see if Russell can get something going offensively now. They've had some uh, drives, but they've missed two long field goals. And I do mean long. One was 52, one was 56. So those were long field goal attempts for Zach Hocker. I mean, we get used to, you know, Zach making them from any place almost on the field. And we don't uh, realize just how tremendous, you know, a weapon he is. And we expect him to make it from, you know, from downtown Dover to Russellville. So, and we have a timeout going to be called. Timeout for Russellville and we'll be right back. Well, something wasn't set the way head coach Jeff Holt wanted it to be. So he called timeout. The Cyclones find themselves 10 points down now and need an offensive spark here to get themselves back in this ball game. Springdale has uh, 
proven that they can move the ball offensively. But the Cyclones have been able to uh, move the ball also. So Barrett Hughes brings a man in motion. That's Collins. Flip it back. It comes all the way back to Barrett Hughes going downtown, but it is intercepted by Springdale. Still on his feet. The return made by Russ Reinerson. Look at it again. It was a reverse. Then flip it back again to Barrett Hughes, who was under pressure when he threw it. The ball was a little underthrown. It's intended for Jacob Sparks, and he tried to make the tackle, but Reinerson slipped away at the 25, back up to the 35, and then almost to the 40-yard line. Making the stop there. Bridger Dale, number 54. Quick pitch right. Here's Welch. Running with the football, but he doesn't get hardly anything. Nice job by the Cyclones defensively. Jackson Jacobs over there to make the stop. Football at the 38-yard line. Well, the Cyclones had a good idea with the double reverse pass, but the only problem was that there were Springdale defenders who were rushing quarterback Barrett Hughes tough anyway. Pass thrown out of the backfield. It is complete. That's to McKinney. Brought down by Andrew Tryon immediately. Look at it again from ground level. Quick pitch left. And there's McKinney, but McKinney's wrapped up immediately. Tryon is a great open field tackler. 7-10 to go in the first half. 17-7. Cyclones on the short end here in the second round of the 7A playoffs. Twin receivers to the near side. Back, Luther wants to throw. Down the middle. Got his man! Down to the 31-yard line. Caleb Vaughn. And Vaughn has made some big catches tonight already and made some big runs. Down to the 31-yard line of the Cyclones. And let me tell you, Mr. Ryan Luther, the quarterback, has been pinpoint on the money with those throws. Back to throw, and he's going downtown again. And it's intercepted in the end zone by Andrew Tryon. It was intended for Jordan Nicholson. Let's look at it again from ground level. Luther back, wants to air it out. Goes to the back of the end zone, had a man there, but it was short again, tipped up in the air, and good job of reaction from Andrew Tryon. That was John Olson who was doing the uh, coverage on the play. And the Cyclones stop this latest drive by Harbor High School and take over. First down and 10th, their own 20-yard line. The Cyclones have been behind before this year and somehow have found a way. Jacob Sparks, nice run to the outside. Levi Kofer, number 17, made the stop. As you can see, he bangs it in there, then bumps it to the outside. Got a little running room. Before stepping out of bounds. At the 35, I should say the 31-yard line. The Cyclones have a first down. Got a little more room to operate. Three wide receivers split. Right. Barrett Hughes brings a man in motion. That's Lane Reeves in the ball game now. And he's going to run the football and bangs his way out. Boy, he is a weapon. Look at it again. Lane Reeves going to keep it on the old Wildcat formation. Just keep it himself and bang in there. That's 6'3", 180 pounds. Gave him a couple extra yards and it's out to the 43-yard line. That's another first down for the Cyclones. And I'll tell you what, 
win, lose, or draw, the Cyclones uh, have to feel real confident with the quarterbacking situation coming up a year from now with Lane Reeves. Hands it off. Jacob Sparks. Boy, there's no hole there this time. Jacob Berndrick made the stop. Number 15. Sparks with not much of any gain on that play. The officials give him a yard on the play, so it'll be second down and nine. You see the clock, 5.30 to go in the first half. Cyclones need a score here before the end of the first half. Get themselves right back into this ball game. Hughes has time, fires down the middle. Boy, how'd he get it in there? It is complete to Demarius Neal. Look at it again from ground level. You talk about pinpoint passing. Look at this, whoosh. Got it right there before he is double teamed. Leading the tackling was Drew Lawson, number seven. The football just across midfield. We'll call it the 50 yard line. You see third down and still about three. This drive began at their own 20 yard line after the interception by Andrew Tryon. Give it off once again. The quarterback is forced back. Not much of any gain that time. Lane Reeves in there again carrying the football, but Harbor smelled that one out. And uh, really not much gain at all. Maybe the length of the football, that's about it. So it's fourth down and still almost three. And uh, this time the Cyclones look like they have opted to punt the football with Zach Cocker, not try another long field goal. Hook rolls back there, and Hawker just has to fall on it. It came, you saw it skipping along the ground, came back to Zach Hawker. He didn't have a chance. Best thing he could do was just fall on it. We'll be right back. Well, a big break for the Wildcats. Harbor leading 17 to seven, has the football. Give it off to Welch and Welch. Pounds in there, Bradford Webb along with Ricky Collins make the stop. The game was down to the, almost the 35 yard line. Ryan Luther, the quarterback. From the shotgun, looks to the sideline once again. Double check the play. Hands it to Welch, and Welch keeps his footing for about two yards. His turn back to the inside that time by Brad Barnes, number 36. Third down and still about five or six to go with 2.46 and the clock moving here at the end of period number two. Cyclones have got to hold Springdale out here. Rolling left, Luther fires and it is complete down at the 29 yard line to Jordan Nicholson. And the officials are going to look it over. To see whether this one is enough for a first down. Which would be an important call here at the end of the first half. So the chain gang makes the trip. And he did not make it. Still about the length of a football for Harbor at the 29 yard line. Okay. 
So, Harbor up to the line of scrimmage. They're going to go for it. It's a fourth down situation. And it is off. And plenty enough for the first down on the handoff to Caleb Vaughn, the first man. And he was able to make three or four yards around the left side. First down for Springdale here late in the first half on a cold night at Springdale. Cyclones trail Harbor by 10. They have to have another Andrew Tryon interception here to stop things. Give it off to Welch. Sweeps the left side. Good running down to the 15-yard line before he stopped. Patrick Jimenez is amongst those there to make the stop. Ricky Collins also we see down there. So they move the football into the uh, hash mark at the 15-yard line. Cyclones would love nothing more than to hold Harbor out here. Hand it off. That's Welch. And he got to about the 12-yard line. Brad Barnes, Rue Massey, and on the stop. Tough, tough running for Harbor here in the red zone. Brian Luther. You see one minute and six seconds to go. Rolling right. Under pressure, and he is going to be dumped by Ricky Collins. Great individual job. See him coming off the left-hand side here. Beats his man. And Luther, nothing he could do. Ricky wrapped him up and dropped him. That's a good individual effort right there. So the loss back to the 23-yard line. Well, we'll take that one. I'll guarantee you. Put some yardage between the goal line and... The Harbor offense, 17 to seven, the score. Bring a man in motion, left to right. Looking, Luther throwing to the back of the end zone and tipped away by Patrick Jimenez at the last second, a tremendous play. Let's look at it again from ground level. Luther sprints right. Looking, looking, and whoops, there's him and it says goodbye. It was intended for Jordan Nicholson, who had beaten Jimenez, but Jimenez had enough time to react and got back there and knocked the football away. So we're going to have a field goal attempt. Looks like this one's going to be 40 or 41 yards by Oscar Escobar. Down, the kick is up. And oh, it's going to be no good. Just came up a little short. So the Cyclone defense holds as you see Andrew Tryon coming off to the near side. 12 seconds left in the first half, and the Cyclones have kept it at only 10. Springdale Harbor 17 and Russellville 7. I'm sure the Cyclones will probably just take an E and go into the halftime locker room and try to make some adjustments to get back into this one. So the football at the 20. 12 seconds to go before halftime. Russell scored first, but no scoring since the first 13 seconds of the first quarter. And Barrett Hughes just puts the knee down, and that should be it. That'll be the end of the first half. Your score, Springdale Harbor 17, Russellville 7. And we'll be back in just a moment.
Cyclone Recap. Highlights of the plays of the first half, and it started with the very first play. The kickoff return of Andrew Tryon, 96 yards. And the Cyclones were on the board in only 13 seconds. Extra point kick good by Zach Cocker, and the Cyclones led 7 to nothing. Tough defense from Blake Robinson there. There's Welch trying to get to the outside. Stopped by Bradford Webb. Going right, the quarterback, Luther, bound down hard, but the field goal kick was good. Pass complete to Collins. Tough running inside. There's a pass complete to Jacob Sparks on the outside. Barrett Hughes underneath. Boy, oh, great catch there, throw and catch to Demarius Neal. Again, the tailback, Vaughn. And then the long pass knocked away at the last second by Jackson Jacobs. And of course, they called a pass interference call on that, and Welch later scored the touchdown. The extra point kick good. Gave Springdale their first lead at 10 to seven. Back Bear Hughes throwing. Nice catch there. Another one out of the backfield, but Lutz had to turn and lost his footing. Good pass, almost is intercepted. And Welch with some tough running there inside. Yeah, Ricky Collins making the stop there. Hard running that, the touchdown from Trey Tyler. That made it 17-7 following the extra point kick. The dipsy doodle long pass is intercepted. It was intended for Jacob Sparks, but making the interception is Russ Ryerson. Pass. And a good job defensively by Andrew Tryon. Look at this long pass the end zone and knocked away and the interception from Andrew Tryon in the end zone. Tough running here, but Jacob Sparks bounces it to the outside. Here's Lane Reeves. On that Wildcat formation run, lowers his head and boom, he made some people pay on that particular run. Barrett Hughes, down the middle, nice catch, turned in there by Demarius Neal. Luther Baggers, Ricky Collins after him, and the quarterback is sacked. Great job by Ricky Collins individually there. And the pass leading to the end zone looked like it was going to be a touchdown, and Jimenez knocks it away at the last second, and it's incomplete. And that's the score at the half. Springdale Harbor, 17, and Russellville, 7. That's the Cyclone Recap. The third quarter about to begin, second half. Springdale will have the option because they deferred to the second half. But boy, that was a physical first half between these two teams. Springdale came in with a bye week and 9-1 and one record. Russellville, of course, beat the other Springdale ball club, the Springdale Bulldogs. One week ago in the first round of the state playoffs, at Russell Cyclone Stadium. Tonight on the road, a cold night at Springdale Harbor High School. So there'll be the announcement of who's going to get what and do what. Harbor had the option. They're going to receive and defend the goal to your left. Russell will kick and will be defending the goal to your right as we begin the third period. Cyclones have had some flashes of offensive movement and some great defensive plays also, but Harbor has come up with 17 unanswered points, a field goal, and then two touchdowns after Russell led 7-0 early in the first period. Head coach Jeff Holt 
Sends Zach Cocker and the kicking team out onto the field. Well, the Cyclones have one half of football to rebound, catch some life, and take the lead. They're not down, but by only 10 points. They've been down before and fought their way back. So the Cyclones trying to come up with a way to down Springdale Harbor and move on to round three of the state 7A playoffs. Zach Hocker will kick it away. These two teams have played pretty well even Steven there in the first half. And we're getting ready for the kickoff from Zach Hocker to begin the third period. He sends it skyward and It'll be taken at the one-yard line. And the gain out to the 20. Returned by Caleb Vaughn. One of the few times that a Zach Cocker uh, kick has not been kicked through the end zone or to the end zone. Football is at the 19-yard line for Harbor. Let's see if the Cyclone defense can get us a Three and out right here and get the ball for the offense here early. Hand off, that's Welch. The left side, big gain to the 33-yard line. 14 yards. Bradford Webb made the stop for the uh, Russell Cyclones. First down for Springdale. That was a big run. The offensive line has been doing a very good job for Harbor in this game. Give it off. That's Welch again, sweeping the left side, and he is a tough runner. Boy, he'll lower that head and get after you. Gain out to the 42-yard line. Bradford Webb again made the stop. Second down and one for Harbor. That was a nine-yard gain. And Welch has been a workhorse for uh, Harbor here this evening. 17 to 7, your score. You're watching IMC Studio Sports Watch, the 7A football playoffs. Welch, now he's going to sweep it right. Got plenty of room out there. And falls forward. John Olson was there to cover him. But plenty enough for a first down. And boy, I'll tell you what, there's been some very good blocking up front by Harbor's offensive line. Welch has had plenty of operating room before the first defenders for Russellville get close to him. Football just across the 50-yard line. First down and 10. Ryan Luther gives it off. That's Welch. He dives back inside of the 47-yard line. Stop was made by Aaron McConnell. And we have an injury timeout. So following the uh, injury timeout, Springdale Harbor will have the football. The official blows the whistle and Springdale moves up to the football at the 47 yard line from the shotgun bring a man in motion give it off and Vaughn cuts to the outside and back to the inside before John Olson and Bradford Webb make the stop also there was Aaron McConnell Gain down to the 43-yard line, and Harbor has been very effective on the ground this evening. The Cyclone defense has at most times stiffened pretty, pretty convincingly also. Give it off. And the motion man carried the football that time. That's Sean Sayerin. 
Rue, Mace, uh, Rue Massey makes the stop, and uh, the football placed down at the 35-yard line. 35-yard line of Russellville. This drive began at the 19-yard line of Harbor. So Springdale has been able to march right down the field, most of it on the ground. Luther fakes to Welch, now rolls and throws on the run. And they say it's complete. Russell fans were not too happy with that call. It was complete to Jordan Nicholson. Patrick Jimenez had defense on the play, so four against four. Both of them wearing number four on their jerseys. The game down to the 22-yard line. Wide receiver way wide left. Luther gives it off. That's Welch and Welch. There's a flag on the play as he fights his way down to the 15-yard line. And it's going to be holding against Harbor. Usually when it's thrown in that area, it's usually a holding violation. And in this case, it sure was. So that will cost 10 yards. And move the football back to the 20 to the 33-yard line. So Harbor moved back out of the red zone, leading 17 to 7 over the Cyclones here in the third quarter. 8 minutes and 38 seconds to go in the third period. Luther Ooh, low snap. Has to go back and pick it up. Now rolls left. He's in trouble. Throws on the run. Complete with a reaching grab. That's McKinney with another grab where he has to really lay out to get it. Made a nice grab. And that's down to about the 22-yard line. Uh, let me move it back a little bit. Almost uh, back to the 24-yard line. So Springdale knocking on the door once again. Here, midway through the third period, already leading by 10, 17 to 7. Luther brings man in motion, gives it off to Welch. Welch around the right side, running to the corner, and is finally knocked out of bounds about the 10 yard line by John Olson. Welch will kind of fake it to the inside and then. Bounce it to the outside and just turn on the juice and some great blocking up front. He has had all kinds of real estate in which to run before he got to the first defender for the Cyclones. Give it off. Welch again sprinting to the outside. Comes back to the inside and he gets down to about the two-yard line before right there was Ricky Collins, along with Logan Pruitt, number 35, marking about the three-yard line. Cold night here in Springdale. Second round of the state 7A playoffs, and I'll tell you what, this running attack from Harbor has been impressive. On the left side, touchdown on the carry by Caleb Vaughn. Look here, he's going to run. He puts the ball up in the air and gets it across the plane to the goal line to make it 23 to 7. 23 unanswered points from the Wildcats. There's a flag on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Russellville. So they may have to mark off half the distance to the goal. Or are they going to do it on the ensuing kickoff? Escobar in for the extra point kick. That would make it 24 to 7. 
downtown. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And your new score is Springdale Harbor 24 and Russellville 7. 7 8 left to go in the third period, and we'll be right back. Well, that was a backbreaker against the Cyclones. That was from the 19 and 81 yard drive. Started at their own 19 yard line. With Caleb Vaughn carrying it in for the touchdown from about three yards out. And now it's 24 unanswered points. The kick and oh, after of course, after the 15 yard penalty was assessed on the kickoff. Escobar kicked it to uh, Zach Hockerish and kicked it out of the back of the end zone. So the Cyclones will have it first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line, but boy, oh boy, they find themselves down 17 points. Need to get something going here in a hurry. Hughes. Firing and it pops away incomplete. Was intended for Collins. Second down and 10. And you see a yellow hanky on the turf there. We'll see. And it's a pass interference call against the Springdale Harbor Wildcats. That so moves it out to the 35 yard line. And a first down. So it may not have been completed, but the Cyclones pick up some positive yardage. Boy, the Cyclones need a spark offensively. Something to get some points on the board. Hughes gives it off on the delayed handoff. Jacob Sparks. Ooh, and Jacob took a big hit as he got... Let's look at it again from ground level. Delay, 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 and then give it off to Jacob. He bounces to the outside, then back to the inside. And who he was hit high and low. High was Jacob Bundrick. Five-yard pickup, though, out to the 40. Three wide receivers split to the right. Hughes looking to throw. Rolling right. Trying to find somebody. Now throws down the middle. Again. And Cole Smith tried to get it. He tried to leap and get it, but it was incomplete. He was open. And I'll tell you, Springdale has done as good a job as anybody this year defending the Cyclones downfield passing-wise. That may be one of the strengths of their ball club, amongst others. Coming into this uh, ball game here tonight, second round of the 7A playoffs, Springdale seven, uh, 9 and 1. Just one loss all year long in 10 games. And they've, as we told you, they have had an extra week because of having a bye last week. They've had two weeks to get ready for tonight's game. Hughes. Forrest out of the pocket. He's going to run with the football now and picks up some good yardage before he's bumped out of bounds. Let's look at it again. This was obviously a passing situation, but again, great coverage from Harbor, as we've been talking about. And Hughes just decides to bounce it to the outside and pick up what he can. And he was he was hit there after he got out of bounds, but it's a first down at the 48-yard line. Cyclones trail by 17 here late in the third quarter. Hughes. Again, the delayed handoff to Jacob Sparks, but this time he doesn't get near as much. Stop was made by Preston Cash, number 26. Really no gain on the play there. Second and 10, 5.51, and the clock moving here in the third quarter. There is no tomorrow. The winner goes on and stays alive in the playoffs, and the loser hangs up the gear. 
Hughes. Firing, got his man at the 47-yard line. That's Collins on the reception. We have a flag on the play. You see it right there. And this one is against Russellville. Look like uh, for holding. Yes, it is. Holding against the Cyclones. Negates that play. And those kind of penalties oftentimes are drive busters. You just get rolling and you got some things going and then a holding penalty tosses you back 10 yards. So now the Cyclones not only didn't get credit for that complete pass and have the penalty, but now they have 24 yards to go for a first down. Hughes going to have to go downfield. He's under pressure, and he is sacked. Well, it's going to be even more. And again, that was a coverage sack. That's all there is to it. Harbor had all the receivers covered, and Barrett Hughes had no place to go. He was going to try to sprint to the outside, but got caught there, and the loss is back to the 20-yard line. Oh, my. 4.30 to go, third period, 24 to 7, Wildcats. 38 now to go for a first down. Give it off to Jacob Sparks, and he got about five. Bumped out by DJ Donahue. Number 22. So that brings up a fourth down. The football will be just shy of the 25 yard line. And the Cyclones will be forced to punt the football away here. Trailing by 17 to Harbor High School. Cyclones got to do some kind of a rally, get some old Mo on their side offensively. And there's the kick. A good kick. Going to take a Russellville roll and roll dead at the 19-yard line. So again, Zach Cocker uses his toe to pin Harbor deep in their own territory, but this is where Harbor began their last drive, their own 19. Out of the backfield, the swing pass goes to Welch, still on his feet. Gets out past the 30 to the 35-yard line. 15 yards on that pass and catch. Bradford Webb was over there, Blake Robinson. But this Welch, he doesn't look very big, he doesn't look very fast, he doesn't look... They're all that shifty. He makes some shifty moves, but boy, he has been effective tonight. Bring a man in motion. Give it to Welch once again. This time, Welch's not going to get that head of steam going. Dropped almost immediately. Addison Walker credited with the tackle. Two-yard pickup is uh, what he is credited for at the 36-yard line. Twin receivers to the near side. Single receiver split left. That's McKinney. Luther firing. Got his man. And a big run to the 50, 45, 40, and down to the 35-yard line. Caleb Vaughn. And again, what a job after the catch by these Harbor receivers. That was just a little swing pass really out of the backfield. And Vaughn picked up about 20 yards after the catch. Football at the 35-yard line. And Springdale is marching again. Again, they started this time at the 19. The last drive they started at the 19. Handed off to Welch, and Welch gets about two. Stop made by Aaron McConnell. 
you think the Cyclones are just about to put the clamps on the running game and they come back with a short pass or with a fake of a short pass and a big run. We'll say again, there's a reason why Harbor is 9-1, and one, and I think you can see it right there on your screen. Ryan Luther back to throw. He's going for all the marbles, and it's way overthrown. Intended for McKinney, Andrew Tryon had coverage on the play. So that one was entirely too long. And McKinney, despite the circus catches he's turned in a couple of times already this evening, he wasn't close enough to make one that time. At the 34. Cyclone defense for sure needs to put a stop on this drive. They cannot allow any more scoring by Harbor. Luther rolls left. Being pursued. Throws. Incomplete. It was intended for Jordan Nicholson but came up way short. And that is a hard throw when you're running to your left and have to be a right-handed quarterback and throw back across your body. Came up short. Football at the 34-yard line. Springdale Harbor leading 24 to 7. 7A football playoffs round number two. Everybody is good at this level when you get to the second round of the state football playoffs. And we're seeing two good football teams play each other here tonight. Luther fires. It's complete. That's McKinney, but he wasn't able to. Ah, oh, the flag's going to be thrown. I think he was already down, and then we got some additional tackling from the Cyclones. We'll see if that's it, and I'm pretty sure that that's going to be the call. Because McKinney had already dropped to the knee, and then two more Cyclones came in and piled in. Personal foul. Well, they are pointing. Ah, the official looks like he's not quite sure exactly what's going on here. Well, the football is going to be moved all the way down. It'll be down around the 13-yard line following that penalty. And that one hurt. But Russell does get the football. And uh, not quite sure how all that occurred. Pass up the middle on the screen pass to Demarius Neal. Look at it again. Barrett Hughes underneath to Demarius Neal. Nice running after he got a hold of the football. I'm still scratching my head over that last play. Because it looked like, uh, and they actually sh showed it was a penalty against Russellville. But uh, somehow the Cyclones got the football. Back, Hughes, throwing downfield, and a nice catch. Let's look at it. Once again, an instant replay, a little fake downfield and off to the sideline and a nice catch there. Looked like that was Collins, yes. And able to leap for it and the Cyclones have a bright spot offensively out to the 43-yard line. Good throw by Barrett Hughes and a great leaping catch by Collins. Third 
Three wide receivers right. Hughes. He's going downfield and Cole Smith was the intended receiver. He drew double coverage and it went incomplete. It's a good throw. Second and 10, football still shy of the 43 yard line. Late third quarter with Springdale Harbor leading our Cyclones 24 to seven, 24 unanswered points by Harbor since the opening play of the ball game when Andrew Tryon went 96 yards with the kickoff return touchdown. Jacob Sparks to the 50 yard line on the little screen pass. Michael Sparkman, number 34, made the stop. We look at it again on instant replay. Jacob Sparks with a couple of linemen out in front of him. Able to get a couple extra yards. Splitting two defenders. So the football at midfield. Third down and still a little bit more than two. Hughes throws it complete to Andrew Tryon. Boy, did he take a shot. But it looks like it's enough for a first down. Look at it again. Hughes against a little screen pass underneath to Andrew Tryon. He gets it right there and then boom, helmet to helmet. Right there. And out of bounds. Making that hit was uh, Levi Kofer, number 17. But it's a first down for the Cyclones. At the 44-yard line. Come on, Cyclones. They need a score right here. You feel like if you get a score, you can kind of get back into it. And Cyclones are going to have to call a timeout right there and check the play. Well, after the timeout, and you always hate those at this stage because you may need them late in the football game. Hughes brings Collins in motion. Fakes. And throws it out incomplete. Threw it behind Collins, and as he turned to try to catch it, he slipped down. That was close to a lateral. It was a forward pass, but it wasn't far. But you know, if you can ever get your hands, get the ball to Collins out there, one-on-one, -on -one, he can make some things happen. But that time, just a little bit thrown behind him, and he slipped down trying to get to it. Three wide receivers split right. Shotgun formation. Hughes. Firing. Incomplete intended for Collins. Hunter Kissinger was the defender on the play. Fourteen seconds left in this third period. And the Cyclones have not been able to score since the opening play of the football game. Very unlike the Cyclones. They've been a high-powered offense all year long. Hughes. Boy, he is what loaded up to going downfield and Collins thought he had it, pleading his case. But apparently uh, it was not a completed pass down at the five yard line. Cyclone fans didn't like that, but the official said that he trapped it. Boy, he was wide open. And you don't get too many opportunities like that in a football game. You have to cash in on them. So Coach Holt trying to come up with something to spark this offense, get some points on the board, get back in his football game with just about a quarter to go. Hughes. 
He's going downtown again. And it's incomplete again. This time intended for Matt Lutz. The defender was Houston Pruitt. And I'll tell you, the defensive secondary coverage from Springdale has really been good this evening. That's the end of the third quarter. Springdale Harbor 24, Russellville 7. Springdale Harbor has the football. Cyclones trail by 17 as we get to this last quarter. And there's Welch to the outside. Rue Massey drops him at the 45-yard line. The Cyclones are faced with making up 17 points in this quarter. Or the season comes to an end. And they don't want that to happen. Springdale Harbor has proven to be exactly as they were billed to be. A good football team, 9-1 on the year from the 7A West. Give it off. That's Welch once again, and he gets to the 47-yard line. Picked up another couple. Stop was made by Addison Walker, the senior, 6-foot, 185-pounder. We've called his name a bunch tonight. Third down and seven for the Wildcats. Fourth quarter and the Cyclones need to stop here to get the football and mosey down the field and get some points. Firing a completed pass at the 40 yard line and out of bounds. That'll be enough for a first down. That's to Vaughn. Caleb Vaughn, the senior wide receiver makes the grab. It's enough for a first down for the Wildcats. Just outside the 40-yard line, and the more you see of those, the less you like it. Luther throws to the right-hand side. Stopped immediately. Making the stop there was Logan Pruitt on Caleb Vaughn. No gain. And the Cyclone defense, of course, has had its moments tonight when they made some big plays, but Arbor has been able to put together 24 points, and there's once again carrying the football. Gordon Welch, number 28. He's had quite a night. He's carried it inside, outside. Football down to the 38-yard line. Only nine minutes and 45 seconds left in this one, and the Cyclones need the football desperately. They can score in a hurry, but they need the football. Luther, right down the middle, has his man and threw it behind him. He had drawn triple coverage, but he had gotten some separation there. Jordan Nicholson. But Luther's pass was thrown behind him. Otherwise, that might have been a touchdown. And as we say, Ryan Luther, the Harbor quarterback, has not been bashful about throwing it downfield. And throwing it deep. He rolls right. Going to throw again. Fires underneath. It's complete. Devon. And out of bounds. So bring it in and reset. For a first down for Springdale. Fourth quarter, 24-7. Harbor. And the Cyclones are desperate to get their hands on this football. Give it off to Welch. 
Welch cuts it inside and made a nice run down to the 14-yard line. Bradford Webb had to make the stop. Again, a little dip to the inside and then to the outside. And Well, I'll tell you what. He has had quite a night tonight. Gordon Welch. And the bad news is he's only a junior. First down at the 14-yard line of the Cyclones, and that defense has been out there a whole lot here in the second half. Give it off. There's to the five, cutting it in, and down to the three-yard line is Bradford Webb and Andrew Tryon. Bring down Caleb Vaughn. But there's a 11 or a 12-yard run. Enough for another first down. It'll be first and goal. And they have had some huge chunks of yardage in some really open field. Like we haven't seen against the Cyclone defense this whole year. And you got to give a lot of that credit to that offensive line from Harbor. They have really blocked well tonight. So first and goal at the three. Give it off to Tyler. And Tyler got down to about the one. Trey Tyler, the 5'7", 175-pound senior running back, number two. Hasn't carried it much tonight, but does have a touchdown. Football about the one-yard line. And a score here from Harbor would not make it easy on the Cyclones to come back. Hand it off to Tyler, and... Tyler did not get in. He got down to the goal line. Blake Robinson said, no, you're not going in. Looks like Springdale would like for the senior to get the touchdown here if they can at all. They place the football, the nose of the football, almost at the goal line. And the clock, a big enemy for the Cyclones now. Seven minutes and 33 seconds left. Give it off to Welch, and Welch is in for the score. Let's look at it again. Same play he's run most of the night. Just dr drop to the outside and find a little crease, and he's in for the score. It is 30 to 7. And 30 unanswered points. The Cyclones scored 13 seconds into this football game and have not been able to dent the board since then. So here's Escobar to uh, attempt the extra point kick. And the kick is blocked by Andrew Tryon. Let's look at it again. He got in there in a hurry. And you can see it boom right there. Well, our score remains 30 to 7, Springdale Harbor. Well, the Cyclones don't have much time to get back in this one. Escobar will kick off. And he has uh, done some sky kicking tonight and also some deep kicking. His first one went for a touchdown. Well, this one again is a little squib kick and the Cyclones are going to fall on it. Good job there by Matt Lutz to get on the football. So let's see what the Cyclones can do here late in this football game. Trailing by 23 now to Springdale Harbor. In the second round of the state 7A playoffs. Two very good football teams banging heads here tonight. Hughes throws and incomplete. Too high. Intended for Collins. Second down and 10. 
And it has just seemed tonight like the Cyclone offense has just been just a little out of sync. Just haven't really come up with that big, big play that they needed to kind of get the old engine moving. Getting the old momentum on their side. Hughes. Pass complete. That's Matt Lutz into Harbor Territory at the 47-yard line. Look at it again. Nice throw and catch here. We've seen this a lot this year. Lutz. Almost broke that tackle. But uh, Levi Kofer made an open field tackle there to make the stop. Six minutes and 50 seconds to go. That is not good news for the Cyclones. Trailing by 23. That's three touchdowns and a field goal. Pass intended for Collins incomplete. So, place the football back at the 47 yard line. And uh, the play comes in with Barrett Hughes from head coach Jeff Holt. To this proud Cyclone offense, which has had such a great year. Back, Hughes. Got time. Now looking for help. And just going to run out of bounds at the 50. And again... I'm talking about those. That was a coverage sack, if you actually want to call it a sack. He got out of bounds, but the great defensive coverage in the secondary by Springdale Harbor has been the best the Cyclones have seen this year. Football right at the 50-yard line. So the that was a fourth down play, so Harbor takes over at the 50-yard line, leading 30-7. to seven. And for them, they'd just like to make a couple of first downs and grind it out now and let that clock run. Give it off. There's a new back in there. Picks up about two. And uh, that is Preston Penalto, number 30, getting his first chance to carry the football tonight. Stop was made by Logan Pruitt, number 35. Gain of a yard. Ryan Luther, the junior quarterback, has gone all the way. He's another one that's coming back. So not only is Harbor 9-1 and one this year, but they've got a lot of juniors coming back for next year. Give it off once again. That is Sean Saren. Number one for a short pickup. And, uh, of course, I'm sure they have been directed, don't you dare come over here and run out of bounds. And it looks like we have a new quarterback in the ball game. That's Reed Joseph, senior quarterback. Hands off inside, down to about the 44-43 yard line. That's Preston Penalto with the carry. So Harbor getting some of their second second team people some action here in this playoff game. Leading by 23 here late in the fourth quarter. Against Reed Joseph. Is the new quarterback for Harbor, number 12. Four and a half minutes to go. And they give it off to Saran. Once again, he's bounced out of bounds about the 41. Over there was Luke Reeves, number 33, the junior, six foot, 220 pounder. And the ball goes over now to the Cyclones on downs. 
And the football didn't move a whole lot, only about nine yards. And the Cyclones get it right back here. Can they get another score before the end of the football game to kind of put bookends on this particular game? Had the first score of the game. Maybe they can get the last also. Jacob Sparks with a big run around the right side and buried after he picked up about uh, maybe five, looks like. The gain was out to the uh, 43-yard line. Second down eight after they give him two yards on the pickup. Barrett Hughes has gone all the way except for a couple of uh, Wildcat plays with Lane Reeves in the ball game tonight. Going downtown and overthrows everybody. It was intended for Collins and he'd drawn double coverage. So there wasn't a good chance that he was going to haul it in anyway. Third down and eight for the Cyclones. From the 43-yard line. Thirty to seven. Should the score remain, the Cyclone season will end here this evening, but what a great year it has been. That one was Jacob Sparks. Nice run after catch. Look at it again from ground level. Hughes. Throws out, gets Jacob Sparks right in front of the camera. And a dive down to about the 43-yard line. Come on, Cyclones, let's put one more on the board for the old season. Hughes, Demarius Neal, with the catch. Stop made by DJ Donahue. Looking at it again, Hughes waited for Demarius Neal to clear from that tight end position. Football down to 36-yard line. Cyclones fighting with every last play they can get their hands on. Hughes throwing downfield and incomplete. Intended for Collins once again. A little bit short. And I'll tell you what, there just hasn't been a whole lot downfield tonight. Good good defense. Uh, as Matt Lutz comes off to the near side, looks like he's holding that left arm or shoulder. 2.45, clock was stopped with the incomplete pass. Cyclones with twins left, and uh, Lane Reeves is out there as a wide receiver. He's played about everywhere tonight. Underneath, and that one's incomplete. And I'm not quite sure who was intended for. Maybe Demarius Neal, but there was a big scrum right there of players, both teams. And it was incomplete. So the Cyclones will go at it one more time. They just have not gotten it to click this evening. Give it off to Jacob Sparks. Sweeps the right side and not going to get but about a yard. Russ Reinerson over there to make the stop. But it's a first down. So the Cyclones able to notch one more Cyclone first down for this year. Football at the 32-yard line. Cyclones run trips left. Single receiver right. Fighting every last play. But that's what you expect out of the Cyclones. Going downfield and... That's intercepted. Intended for Collins and intercepted by Houston Pruitt, number five. five. 
So following the interception by Houston Pruitt, number five for Harbor. Handed off and short running straight ahead. That's Preston Pinalto carrying the football. Harbor deep in their own territory following the uh, interception. Football at the four-yard line is Reed Joseph directing the activities for Springdale Harbor. Just a minute and 34 seconds away from a second-round victory in the state playoffs. Give it off straight ahead. And that was a new ball carrier in the game. That is Blake Hughes. 31 was in there to make that play. Down to a minute and six, minute to five. And, of course, Springdale Harbor is going to run as much time as they can off the clock before they walk up to the line of scrimmage. They'll have to at least have one more play, maybe two. Reed Joseph. Short handoff to the 10 yard line. Still won't be enough for the first down. And the football goes over on downs with 41 seconds left. Football will be at the uh, nine yard line. So the Cyclones will get a couple of plays. Russell scored first in this football game on a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown to open the game. By Andrew Tryon. The Cyclones have not been able to score since. Three wide receivers left. And that's Jacob Sparks down to the five-yard line. Will that be the last carry of Jacob Sparks' career here at Russville High School? 20 seconds left. Cyclones are going to get up to the line of scrimmage. Have one last play probably in this one. Lane Reeves throwing to the end zone. It's intercepted. And brought out by number 23, Thomas Robles. And that's, I believe that's the football game. Yes, that's it. Final score, Springdale Harbor defeats Russellville. 30-7 to in the second round of the state playoffs. Cyclone recap. The great plays of the second half. Cyclones played tough in this one. Did their very best, but there's the score for Springdale from Caleb Vaughn. The extra point kick was good. And that made it 24 to 7 in favor of the Wildcats. Barrett Hughes handing off to Jacob Sparks. Never say die for the Cyclones in this one. They just kept fighting, but it just wasn't the night for the Cyclones. Back, Barrett Hughes. Looking, 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 looking. Great coverage defensively in the secondary by Springdale Harbor all night long. Here's Hughes. Dumps it underneath to Demarius Neal. One of the few plays that did work pretty well all night long. Again, Barrett Hughes fakes. Now going to throw downfield and a great catch here by Collins. Leaping catch, one of the greatest plays of the ball game. Back, Barrett Hughes throws it underneath to Jacob Sparks. Makes a nice run here. Twists and turns and gets out to midfield. It was just one of those nights. Cyclones had some good plays, but not enough. And 
didn't put together what was necessary to get into the end zone more than the opening kickoff return by Andrew Tryon. Give it off to Welch here for Harbor, and he's able to get in for the score. The extra point is tried here, but Andrew Tryon says, nope, not this one. And it put the score at 30 to seven in favor of Harbor. But the Cyclones came right back. Trying right down to the end, Matt Lutz with a great catch there. Barrett Hughes, the great senior quarterback, throws out, gets Jacob Sparks right in front of you. We've seen that many, many times throughout the year. Great thrills. Fires it underneath, complete to Demarius Neal. And here are those seniors. What a job, what a year that they have had. Some of them we knew, some of them were brand new stars for us throughout the year. But boy, what thrills did they bring us throughout the campaign. A shot at the conference championship, make it to the state playoffs round two again this year. I mean, what can you say? A great job by a great group of young guys. We were just thrilled to be able to bring you the broadcast, the telecasts throughout the season. 12 games worth this year because of the great effort that started all the way back there in August with these young men. Congratulations, Cyclones. A great year. Was happy to be with you throughout the year. We wish you the best in all your future endeavors. That's the Cyclone Recap.